Thank you, thank you for coming. How many people are here because they have to be? Oh, God. All right. <laughs> How many people are here because I scratched their car on the way in? <laughs> I don't think I scratched your car, but. Uh, well, welcome. I'm really glad you're here. And the reason that I got asked to do this, uh, pr probably not because you all have heard of Art and Cause, right? Anybody heard of Art and Cause? Not a chance. We're um, about a two-year-old company, and we have uh, 12 people. So chances are you have not heard yet of Art and Cause. Um, Art and Cause is a, a social enterprise, which I'll talk about. Um, I spent all the previous years of my career before the last two years working for large computer companies. So I am a technologist. I was trained as a, I have a computer science degree. I have a math degree. I um, also have an MBA from Lawrence Tech. And, uh, that's what I did my whole life, worked for large computer companies. The last round was a company, a little company called Sun Microsystems, if any of you are familiar with computer companies. Uh, lots and lots of years there. A lot of time in automotive, you know, very much focused on technology. I am a technologist. And so I think I got invited to do this talk because I really did shift my career from a heads down technologist, work in automotive, that kind of stuff, to something that has a little bit more of a social impact. I'm going to close this door. So I did also bring bribes. So if you do have questions and you can contribute to the conversation in any good way, I will toss a bribe to you. So that's a good thing. I really want, uh, I think we'll all get more out of it if, it's, if we're kind of interactive. But we'll try to keep it moving along. All right, so you know, I know that uh, obviously a lot of you are here because you have to be here. You didn't actually have to sign up for this series, I'm guessing. Um, Probably, you know, maybe you're going to try for the prize, but that may not be the main motivator by it for this as well. Uh, the, the purpose of this, from an from, uh, outside perspective, from the stage of life that I'm in, which is a little bit different than yours, is starting to look and decide intentionally that I want to take the skills that I have and I want to use that to have some kind of social purpose. And what's interesting right now is across the country, there's a movement afoot for people, uh, and maybe some of you are in this category, who want to start their career in a place that has social purpose. And can you do that if you're in technology? Or maybe you already are doing something and you want to shift over. How can I do that? How can I move from what I'm doing today to um, something that is maybe be a little bit more uh, uh, purposeful or meaningful? So we're going to go through today a few different things. First of all, we're going to talk to s about six specific strategies for um, how to approach building a career or starting a career in, um, s with social purpose. So some very specific tactics or strategies you can use. We're going to look at your technical degree and um, how can you map that into work that might have a different kind of meaning, maybe something other than automotive, or you know, I don't know exactly what's in your path, but something else. Um, and you know, how do you, how would you shift your career if you are a head to, heads-on technologist? You're working for a chemistry chemical company. How do you shift your focus to something else? And then um, we're going to lastly start to look at. I have a worksheet on um, what I did, sort of a tactical. You know, I'm an engineer, so I took this whole. I want to change my career and shift my focus from an engineer's perspective. And I have a process that I went through. So I'm going to share that with you. And I built a worksheet for you. So you can use it now. You can use it later. It's a, uh, a tool for you all to help move forward. All right, so six tactics or six strategies, really, to help you decide or figure out where you want to go or options for where you want to go. All right, the first one, and I'll, I'll bet you that you know people like this, if you, you may be like this. There are people that I know who um, decided from a very early age that they were going to cure cancer. They you know, have a mission in life, a purpose in life, and they knew from the time they were seven, maybe because somebody they knew was sick or somebody needed something or some big event happened that caused them to, to direct their career in one path. And so then you build your, your educational plan, you build your work plan around that thing that I'm going to go do. Any of you guys fall into that? You know anybody who's ever done that before or has got a mission like that? No. It's not a lot, and it's pretty hard to do. 
pretty hard to stay kind of focused that way. And when you decide too early on something, you might end up sort of twisted into a place that you didn't really feel comfortable with later. Second one. If you, um, this is, we're going to get a little more practical maybe. Um, does anybody have some kind of a passion for a, a thing, they, a problem they want to solve? Or, you know, do you, do you feel like you really would love to work on um, uh, water systems in third world countries? Do you think that maybe you really are driven to do sustainable architecture? Do you feel, you know, does anybody feel anything like that? Do you feel like you want to move in a certain direction to look for a company that does those things? So the biomedical engineering, GE Healthcare does a ton of work. And if you're in, G, if you're in biomedical studies, you probably already know this, that's a great company to strive to go work for if that's the thing that you're interested in doing. So the challenge is to um, be able to go find the places and then to go find a way in. Does this make sense? Does this sound familiar to anybody? Does anybody have something that they'd like to go work on? Some kind of social problem maybe or some kind of technical problem that they'd like to go solve when they get out of here? What's that? You don't know if you can. Yeah, right. You don't know if you can. But that's the, you know, the, the nice thing about if you, can, if you have a problem that you want to get your hands around, you can actually start to read. You can learn about it, right? Then you've got a starting point. You can go s discover what are the classes that I need to take? What's the, the people that I need to go meet? And what are the companies? If I want to go work for GE Healthcare, what would I do to start myself on that path? If I want to do biomedical work, what would I do? What steps would I take? And you can actually start to list that out, right? Because you've, you've got a goal. You've got a place to go. Yeah? place where you can actually speak up and be heard, mm -hmm. maybe have a bit of an impact. And be a part of the majority, but also have a majority that can rule well. Yeah, I love that, actually. So here's the thing. There's, um, you know, if you, if you don't have a thing that's driving you, then you want to drive, right? So think about, you all are working on your schools. How many people here have student loans? Yeah. Look, at there's even more of that. So you are going to have to leave and go get a job and pay back your student loans, right? And so sometimes the most important thing is get a job. If you can think about a job in a place that is not too bad, so say it's Ford. Ford actually is in the top 10 of the, uh, no, number 13, of the uh, f uh, Global 500 Corporate Sustainability Group. I mean, this is really important. So you can, with a little bit of effort, go to work for a company that has a, um, the potential for, for a place for you, right, to, to have a job that is responsible, that's contributing in some way, where you're going to be able to make a personal impact, a personal statement. And it's going to be actually possible at a place that you already know is leaning that way. So this second example here, if you, know, you can't read it probably, it's from Northrop Grumman. So companies that you may not suspect. So a little bit of research. And I, when you leave, take the um, resource sheet and this um, global 500 uh, list of corporate responsibility uh, companies, you'll, you can go look, at the, go look at their website. But with a tiny bit of research, you can find companies that actually are doing pretty good stuff. I mean, it may not be the thing. Maybe you don't have the thing, right? Maybe it's more general. And you really just want to do, the, do something good and have an impact and have a voice. So go somewhere that is probably going to lean that way anyway going to make, give you an opportunity to lean that way. And then maybe because you're there, you could actually make a really big difference at that company. I mean, think about Northrop Grumman or Ford, companies of that magnitude 
you had an impact there, think of the impact that ripples out, right? That's a big, those are big companies. Huge impact you would have just because you are having the potential, the possibility of working at a place that is going to give you the opportunity to think about something a little bit more socially responsible. All right, so number four strategy. Oh, let me go back one more time, one more thing on this. So before I switch from here, let me just mention to you, when you look, so if you are going to go look for companies that are known to be socially responsible, look for the indices that are published out there. There's, there's a bunch of different comp organizations that rate companies. So it's a good place to look. And you'll see some of that on this resource sheet. But you will look for things that are um, like environmental responsibility, corporate governance, fairness to their employees. Right, and Ford's, Ford's hallmark, of course, is, is responsible products and services, accountability to the community, I mean, things like that. Look for things like that. And one of the biggest one is human rights. And the reason I switched back here is because of Nike. So if you um, are, you know, you guys have technical degrees. I mean, there are amazing jobs at a place like Nike. And Nike used to be the bottom when it came to human rights. I mean, they were, people were, were blackballing them. They were, I mean, they, it was, they were just in a terrible position because of their human rights record. And they decided they were going to change that. They put a big focus on that. There are people working at Nike, and all they do is take care of that particular issue. They focus on social responsibility. And now they're always in the top 10. So what a great opportunity that would be. And here's another one. So right now, if you go online, so the number four strategy is, um, Go find the perfect job and then build your plan to go get it. So there's a job posting right now at Reebok for the director of social purpose. I mean, it just sounds so cool. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to be the director of social purpose at Reebok? It's, you, know, they, you have the opportunity to shape and share their vision of access to fitness as a human right. I mean, who would have thought of that as something that is socially responsible? But of course it is. Of course it is. And they're taking it really seriously. They have a director of social purpose. They're hiring this um, role here. It's in, in Massachusetts, if anybody actually wants to apply for that job. There's a lot of really cool things. Um, you, can, you can go find a job and then go and um, you know, craft your strategy, your, t your education and your strategy for moving out to match that kind of work. If that's the job you want, I mean, maybe it's not the Reebok social purpose person. Maybe it's the Northrop Grumman VP, right? I mean, the, you know, these companies, GE Healthcare, Ford Motor, go look at what they're doing and think about how you could tailor what you're doing, even your resume and the jobs that you apply for, to go get one of those. Why not? So the challenges with something like this is there's, that right now there's not as many of them. But then again, there's not very many people who know about this either. You're kind of getting a little bit of an advantage because you're, if, if you are purposeful in looking for purposeful work, you know, I, there is a movement afoot. There, are, there is a shift in our culture from the for-profit side of the world to move more toward a mission-driven work. They are, Big companies are now more and more feeling the need to have some kind of social mission. So we'll see more and more of this. Right now, this is the beginning of the wave. And you guys are the smart ones because you came. You're thinking about this. You want to have purpose in what you do. And you're going to map out your strategy purposefully deciding what you want to do. Actually, you can use the same strategy whether you're doing this kind of thing or something else. But you, you can be in front of this. There's not going to be a lot of people applying for this job. If you're, in fact, by the way, if you have a communications degree and you're almost done, I'd go apply for that job. <laughs> All right. Um, and so, you know, this is kind of the notion, again, about having a really big impact. Because the companies that are doing these, the, the companies that are doing this, besides small companies like mine who are totally focused on this, big companies that are doing this, you can have just, you know, the, the, the biggest impact because you are in a big place. The other part is that, that large companies, um, as they move in this direction, if you go to a big company, you, you can continue to watch for opportunities like this to move to a place where you can have an impact. All right, the number five strategy is to uh, build your own. So, uh, and we are seeing a lot of this. Actually, young people coming out of college and starting their own companies, their own nonprofits to do um, socially 
responsible work. Uh, they have some kind of a mission that something they want to go uh, have decided is the most important thing in their lives and they're going to go build their own. So we are, Art and Cause is, a, uh, is known as a social enterprise. It's a, a new kind of company called an L3C. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's actually a, a mission-driven for-profit company. So it's sort of a hybrid between a non-profit and a for-profit enterprise. Um, we do software. We're our uh, software products company and we only work with nonprofits. So on social entrepreneurs as opposed to a, and a regular old entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur is somebody who's actually trying to shift the industry. So it's a nonprofit might go and um, solve a specific problem. They might have a food pantry, maybe, give some food away. So if you think of the model of giving someone a fish, or you could teach them how to fish so you don't have to give them fish every day, right? Teach them how, that's the second step. We're enlightened, we give them food stamps and teach them how to apply for food stamps. The third step would be to change that industry, so to make a systemic change. So that's what a social entrepreneur is about. So my company, we started this company with the intent that we were gonna make a change across the nonprofit industry. And so, I don't know if we will, but we're, we're doing everything we can. I mean, we're charging ahead, we're, we're building software, we're working from an industry perspective. So, but regardless of that, even to start, we, you know, I have met a lot of people in the last year who have started nonprofits. There's a young man who is graduating out of U of M this year. He's got a, comp, uh, a nonprofit that he started and they're delivering um, fresh fruits and vegetables to gas stations and small party stores in Detroit because of the, one of the problems in Detroit is getting fresh food Right, it's very hard for them to find fresh food, and they do a lot of their food shopping at the local party store, or grocery store, or a gas station kind of store. So he's got this truck, and they're delivering fresh food. So it's you know it's it, it's not a for-profit company. It's going to depend on handouts and, and grants and that kind of thing. But he's trying to make a difference. He's being socially responsible. He's coming right out of his Ross uh, business school with his business degree in hand, and he's going to go and start this this new organization. So. It is possible to do that, and it's a lot of work, but it's certainly very fulfilling to go and do the thing that you really dream about. Is anybody thinking about doing something like that, starting their own company, starting their own something? Yeah? Do you want to tell us about it? Oh, electronics? Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. What kind? Anything, uh, anything with a uh, mission? Who's your customers? Who would you be your customers? Uh, general public. Yeah. Oh, consumer products. So uh, electrical, consumer products. Think about the social b benefits you could have in a, in a company like that, right? There's so much room for uh, making people's lives better, making things socially, uh, environmentally responsible, making things safer. There's lots of ways to focus your attentions on your technical work, your technical degree, your technical products in a way that is socially responsible. All right, so we did um, start off with a smidgen about volunteering. And I will say that uh, if, uh, you know, volunteering is a critical step in learning how to do this social stuff. Um, you know what, I can send this to people. I see you guys are writing stuff down, and I never print things because I'm socially responsible, I'm environmentally responsible, but uh, I can send you the presentation. Is there a sign-up sheet? Yeah, we have a sign-up Does it have email on it? Yeah. So if you guys put, if you want, I mean, if your email's on the sign-up sheet, I can send you this set of uh, points. I should have said that in the beginning, sorry. Um, anyway, so if you cannot find a job and you are determined that you're going to move this way, volunteer. And I'll tell you a little bit more about how I got where I am, and I really did it by volunteering, and I learned a lot about that. Um, the nice thing is... Uh, for you guys, because of the uh, te technical skills here, I mean, if you do have a place you want to volunteer or a kind of a problem that you want to go help with, and you come in the door with your technical skills, there's no place that isn't going to want you. So your, your challenge and your opportunity is to think about, uh, if I want to be here, what are the things that I want to develop to get there and find the place that's going to help you move that way 
I mean, one of the problems we saw uh, in my early days building a, a nonprofit, I had uh, um, actually created a uh, organization called the Michigan Council of Women in Technology. So it's women technologists. And one of the things we were trying to do was help other nonprofits with technical uh, assistance. And you know, nonprofits are so needy with anything having to do with technology that people would just get buried in there. So you have to be careful with that. Other than that, you have the opportunity to learn anything you want to learn to go work in any kind of field that you think is interesting to you. So it's a great way to move ahead. It's a great way to build your skills. And it's also a great way to get to know people. I mean, one of the biggest challenges, you can, you can say, I want to go work at GE Healthcare, or you can you know, want to go work at the Red Cross. Uh, if you don't know anybody, if you don't have anything on your resume that's relevant to that, that's the problem I had. When I decided I was going to change my direction, and I went and looked at Land Conservancy and Sierra Club and all these cool places, I had nothing. I mean, you know, I really had nothing to offer. I had to go build something first. I had to go build up my resume before there was anything even worth uh, talking to me about. So I learned a lot doing volunteering. All right, so here are the six approaches. And this is the first break in the action. What we're going to do is ask you to break into small collections of people, twos, threes, and uh, um, talk about this. Talk about you know, if you know anybody that's had one and whether it worked or not, one of these strategies, tried one of these strategies, and if not, what makes sense from your own perspective? What, are you, what, would, what would maybe help you as you leave here and even as you finish up your, your uh, classes, your courses? Is there anything in here? What, what kind of strategy would help you move along this path? Together, five minutes. Getting quieter. Ready to come back? Move along. All right, now I have another question. I pledge to explore and take into account the social and environmental consequences of any job I consider and will try to improve these aspects of any organization for which I work. Have any of you guys heard of this? No? So this is kind of one of those other movements. Um, you, you, uh, I actually put it on the resources sheet. There's an organization that is uh, trying to raise awareness at colleges around the country about just thinking twice. If you have two choices of jobs, which one is the company that might be more socially responsible, which one has an opportunity for you. It's just something else to kind of call attention to what's going on. I'll put the link there. Uh, it's something maybe Lawrence Stack should start looking at this as an opportunity for the students to take a look, to map your degree, to, to think about um, the trying, just making the effort. Now, I handed out uh, the starting point. And actually, I would love to have any ideas, because really what we'd like to do, this, this link also is in the resources sheet. This is an organization called Net Impact. And uh, their uh, college focus, they just had a big conference here last year at U of M. There was 6,000 people here. It was kind of a big deal. Um, one of their projects, because they're so college oriented, was, is about careers, corporate careers that make a difference. So it's another resource for you all to go and kind of look up. Here's my degree. Here's some ideas for uh, the types of careers that I might be able to go and pursue based on the things that I'm interested in and that I have my education in. Um, so I started that worksheet that, or that uh, handout that you just got, that job map. What I would love to do is spend three minutes and ask you guys to help me fill it out. So I need some ideas. So if you are electrical and you are doing consumer systems, consumer products, you might focus uh, from a socially responsible perspective on safety or on accessibility, right? Maybe it's a product that's going to help overcome some kind of handicap. Um, if you are an electrical engineer, you could focus on medical test systems. You could focus on big power systems, right? Think of the environmental opportunities there. How many electrical folks we got? Two? Got any other ideas? No, actually, I'm working with, I work for a actually. You do? Yeah. I'm a senior student there. Uh, I had this class and two months ago I was back. Oh, fabulous. Chrysler came out with a lot of good ideas, actually, and, you know, the cars right now. So it's all something to do even, you 
decide they can have food something. Tremendous. Safety. Tremendous safety yeah, implications. So they manufacture or put it in medication and that would be cruise control. When what you do if you drive it, if somebody jumps in front of you, now your car would shut off by itself, which is it would slow down and apply the brake for you. So much for the, I don't know if you guys can hear what he's saying, but he's got some pretty cool stuff that Chrysler's doing on um, uh, uh, helping with new safety systems. I like the, if a person jumps in front of your car, it automatically shuts off. Well, so no more suicide attempts by jumping in front of cars. We'll apply the brakes. Apply the brakes automatically. It will reduce the speed, so it's actually what's doing. Measure the distance between the two vehicles, and it calculates what, what speed you're supposed to be on. And it breaks for you. Oh, powerful. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so what else we got in here? A chemical? Uh, architecture? All right, what do we got? Architecture. What are your ideas? None. Sustainable buildings, my gosh, that's huge. The opportunities for environmental impact are tremendous in architecture and any kind of building. What about civil engineering? Anybody doing that? What are you people studying? <laughs> you guys in the back, what are you studying? What's your, what's your program? Computer science. Computer science, yay. <laughs> computer science, huge opportunity. Uh, yeah, there's no end to what you can do in computer science, right? Have you thought about any socially responsible opportunities in computer science? Are you into the hardware or the software? Software, software engineering? Back on. I love it. So that's what I do. That's what my company does. There are other companies, although not very many, that focus on nonprofit. But outside of nonprofit, there's still just the implications of what you can do programmatically are tremendous. I mean, even just in education systems, right? There's so much movement right now in uh, digital or in some kind of electronic delivery of education for global equity, for, you know, there's a lot of, and it's all because of technology. Cool, cool. What else? What's, what's your degree? What's your program? Architecture. Architecture. Got any thoughts? I mean, you said sustainable, but um, how the urban develop, like, Plan incorporates into right. like the population, like with Detroit getting people back into Detroit. How the urban planning can help with that. Yes, fabulous, fabulous. Are you interested in doing something like that? Not really, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, throw low, higher. <laughs> No, but that's a good idea, right? Urban planning is huge. There's a lot of stuff going on in the city. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things happening. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. In um, Eastern Market, has anybody ever been to Eastern Market? Pretty cool place. There's uh, one of the big old empty warehouses there. They are converting it into a uh, fish food farm inside. So they're building the tanks to grow the fish, and then they're using the water as... Um, fertilizer for other systems. I mean, there's this whole closed loop thing going on and it is just amazing. And the engineering behind all of it is incredible. But think about the implications of that for people, for food, for, you know, and then reusing buildings that haven't, haven't been available. What else? How about one of you guys? What, what are you studying? IT. IT? Mm -hmm. What are you into? Um, I'm working as an intern right now. Where? Oh, transmission. Okay, so you're into the automotive side, right? Lots and lots of opportunity for safety and intelligent vehicles. Oh, great. Communications. Powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, especially now on the online, right? It's the, it's the single biggest disseminator of information. Right? People get what, almost all of what they get, they get that way, and it's only going to get more powerful, especially with young people, right? the influence on kids and what's happening. And so people that are um, putting the information out there, that's pretty significant. <laughs> okay, what else? What other kinds of, how about uh, construction engineering, industrial design, anything like that? Yeah, got any thoughts? No, have you thought at all about going this way? 
about doing anything that might be transportation. Oh, that's great. Actually, last year, a group of transportation design students created some materials for the Wounded Soldier Project to try to encourage wounded soldiers to pursue careers in design because it's something that you can do if you have injuries, it's something you can do from home. So it's a good example of how transportation design students have pursued something like this in the past. That's, that's marvelous. That is marvelous. And, it, you know, you certainly see, um, whoops, oh, man. Oh no, I'm just out to get you. I'm sorry. What's your studies? <laughs> You're in computer science. Yes, great, great, great. Anybody else have something, other area of study that they might help me with my worksheet that I'm trying to fill out? Any other thoughts? What's that? Yeah. Great. Fabulous. Go green. But even that, I mean, think how wide that topic is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we think about how much more important that's getting to be every day, right? Materials. Everything's getting more scarce and the, the costs are going up. And so aside from the fact that we want to be socially responsible, it may become the only choice, right? Environmental responsibility is, is going to take over. You're not going to have a lot of other options. All right, any more? That was fun. Yeah. Well, technically, my major here is industrial design, but my focus is on fashion design. Ah, you should go work for Reebok, Nike. <laughs> and what kind of work? Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, the, the opportunities in anything having to do with um, materials. Right, and the, the social implications, the environmental implications of consumer anything is so tremendous. And so just, and that's what that graduation pledge is about. It's really the chance to just raise your awareness a little bit, think just a little bit about, you know, what your choices are, where you might go with that. You could go, I gotta tell you, my, I have a daughter, she's 27. She's finishing up her PhD at uh, University of Florida, and she's a microbiologist and you could not pay her enough to work for Monsanto, she wouldn't go there if they chained her to the dot. She wouldn't do any work. I mean, there's no way she would work there. She would work for the Humane Society, but she wouldn't work for Monsanto. I mean, so she might be a little bit extreme because of her mom, but it's a choice. You get to make a choice. And you guys are lucky because you are thinking about it now. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my own travels. Um, Truly, more and more people are leaving the corporate world, and I left the corporate world to do what I'm doing now. And I got to say, I loved working at Sun Microsystems. How many of you guys have heard of Sun Microsystems? It's pretty, it was a huge company. It was one of the biggest companies in computer business. I was there for almost 20 years. Um, I absolutely loved it. And by the time I left there, I was a uh, global director. I was a, a you know, pretty significant job. I had 80 people reporting to me across the globe. And, um, but I had been, for the 10 years before that, working my way out. I started with, as an engineer, I was an engineer at two other computer companies before I went there, a computer engineer, that is. And um, I was a heads down, I love my work. And everybody knows, everybody worked hard, and we didn't really have a life, and that was OK. Um, at one point, I, my, when my daughter went away to college, and I started working even more hours, some people told me that I was probably making a bad choice. And so I was wise enough to lift my head up and look around a little bit, come to Lawrence Tech, get an MBA. I, I actually started looking at what else was going on around me and thought, I need something more in my life. One was just people who I didn't work with, some more friends, some more, you know, get a life, basically, <laughs> get a life. So I started this nonprofit, this women in technology group. And we started a foundation because we wanted to teach girls about science, math, technology. So we do summer camp here at Lawrence Tech, actually, for middle school kids, girls. And uh, we have a bunch of scholarships and different kinds of programs. And so it's still going strong. There's 700 members in the organization. So that was really important for me. And actually, I made a plan. So as I was realizing that I was dissatisfied, thinking about where I wanted to go, I went and looked at really cool nonprofits that I thought I could go work for and thought that didn't work out because I didn't have any skills. 
So I started volunteering and I started getting involved in different kinds of things and realized that I was a technologist and I love technology. So as much as I wanted to go and do something that had social meaning, I wasn't going to go and do something that didn't involve technology because I wouldn't like it. I'm, I'm just not a social worker by nature. It just wouldn't have wouldn't worked. So I had to go kind of craft the thing that fit for me. Um, my plan was that I was going to be an executive director and run that organization. And my plan changed. I kind of moved and did some other things along the way. But um, I went at it from a very uh, engineering approach. I, I, I literally wrote the steps. And so I'm going to hand you out the steps and, um, that I took. And you know, I would say that these, this, this worksheet will serve you whatever it is that you want to do. So basically, the point of this is to kind of give you a, an approach to, and I don't know, have you guys done this? Has this been part of your time here, where they kind of help you with a, how to find what you, what, you're, what you care about, where you might want to go work, and that kind of stuff you have? So you might not need this. This might not be useful for you at all. It's, it's, it's sort of a, and maybe it's because I was coming at this from a, you know, I had started working in 1982. So I had 20 years of time in as a, as a hardcore technologist. And so I wanted to change that. And I had to really make an effort to go and do something different. At your stage, there's possible that you have some expectations of yourself or other people have expectations of where you're going to go and what you're going to do. And you might need to change your direction a little bit from that. So it's an opportunity to think about um, what do I want? What do I want to be? What do I want to do? And we're, um, we're, I'm going to end with this. And so what we'll do is I'll talk through a little bit of it. And then um, uh, and then we'll, we'll just close. You can work together on it or not, because it's kind of getting a little bit late. Um, but the main thing is, yep, that's it. The, the point of this is, is to um, start from a, a practical perspective. Where are you today? Why are you even thinking about this? And of course, since a lot of you came because you had to, you don't ever have to think about this again. <laughs> Recycle the paper, please. Um, how do you define your own vision? And, and you know, I, at this stage, this is going to be hard. But I got to tell you, at my stage, this is hard. And I actually, one of my partners, has, you know, she came into our company, our small company, as a partner because she got drawn into my vision. And she stopped a, a month or two ago and said, I don't have a vision. I don't, what am I passionate about? What do I care about? What am I doing here anyway? You know? So it's hard at any stage to really take the time to know yourself well and to think about what is it that I want to be. If I can picture my perfect place, what am I doing? in the place that I'm most happy, in the place that I'm most strong and contributing what I want to contribute. So that's what that list of questions is. You can use some of the questions. You can use all the questions. Um, the third step is to write that down and iterate that until you're done iterating it, until you feel like you don't really have anything else to say. Um, and then ask yourself, why am I not there? And so for you guys, some of you are somewhere else already, but a lot of people here are still in school. If you um, have obstacles in the way, and maybe it is expectations, and maybe it is where you are in your education, where you are in your career, you know, what are those obstacles? And you're going to knock them down. So this is just a process about take the problems that you're in front of you, the things that you feel like are blocking where you want to go, and take them apart. And piece by piece, we're going to overcome those. And, you know, for me, it was something as there, there were some basic skills that I needed to learn. I, I couldn't go apply for a job at Sierra Club. I flat out did not qualify for anything they were looking for. Um, so I had to go learn some things. I also had to get myself to the point where I was going to be okay from a financial perspective. I was coming off of a pretty high end job at a pretty big company. I made a lot of money. And I just kept thinking, I can't live without that. I can't live without that. And so I had to, to take that apart and look at what do I really need. Why do I need it? You know, what are my steps that I can take to move myself past that hurdle? So the idea is to identify the things that might be in your way and to you know, just methodically go through and take those down one by one. Move yourself forward. 
what are the strategies? We talked about six different things you can think about, but what other strategies? Talk to friends. If you have specific blockers that you're trying to overcome, specific skills that you want to learn that you're not getting in your classes, um, there's other people. Talk to people. There's, you know, these are just ideas, and it's good to brainstorm with people. Write it down, write it down, write it down, and then write down some steps, and then start. The next thing you know, you're halfway there, and then the next thing you know, you're there, and you know, in the end. If you, if you are uh, motivated to, if you write your vision down, if you write down where you see yourself and the place you really want to be, um, and you put a little bit of honest thought into what that is, what are the things that are in your way, you will actually get there. It's a question of time. And if you have to do some other things along the way because you have to do some other things along the way, that's okay too, right? You do what you got to do and you move yourself forward. Every step of the way, you just move yourself forward. And that can apply to whether you're trying to do a socially responsible career or whether you just want to you know, have the biggest house on the block. It doesn't even matter. It's the same thing. It's the idea of a methodical st strategy or tactical approach to doing this. So from my perspective, I had to do it that way. I love spreadsheets, so I did spreadsheets, and I wrote things down. And so as a technical person, you guys might like something similar, if, that's, if that makes sense for where you are in your life. Um, and so that's where these quotes all came from. I'm, in fact, this is our motto at work, just get started, right? I say it all the time, just get started. If you just get started, it, the, only, the hard step is really the first step always. So just get started. You're going to go there. Let's get started. And that's all there is to that. Got any other questions? How do you, how do you find, like, I, I find that there's digital tools for the family at work. I like to do a lot of volunteering work, but I just can't find the time. Half the time, I can't do the time. I don't have time to do my homework. Yeah. Well, you might not want to volunteer right now. I mean, you know, you also need to be practical about where you are in your life and what's possible to do. You know, sometimes you ask too much of yourself and then you're frustrated, which never helps, right? Feeling frustrated never helps. So if you have a plan and it says, I'm going to start volunteering in 2014, great. I mean, if you're, you're going to feel better too, right? And if you have specific things, you can think about where I want to go and what do I want to do then. And maybe you can kind of think about how to get there, but don't. Yeah. You have to be realistic. I mean, a lot of what I have done, I did after my daughter went to college. You know, I got I freed up a lot of time. And so now I, I got to say, you guys have a huge advantage here because you get to choose now. You get to make decisions now that can help you move along a path like this later. Or not, but you know, you can decide. It's up to you. And we were going to break into groups and work on that, but we're not going to, right? Because it's kind of late. And it's 10 to 6, 5 to 6. Um, when does that fun start it? Yeah? Yeah, I, I would say, because if you don't start now, let's be realistic, guys. You're probably not going to, right? Going to a couple of years. <laughs> Smiling right now. <laughs> Get together and fill out, how about the first page and then talk about it with the people that were in your group earlier and we'll be five minutes here, okay? All right. You guys want another uh, sweets? 